Here we have our old friend the helix and we want to find kappa, the curvature for that helix. Remember our formula, we could find kappa the long way by finding dt ds and taking its norm, but it's faster to find d unit tangent d time, take its norm, and divide by the speed, that's ds dt. Okay, let's let's do it using the, the easy method here. First off, we need to find the unit tangent, which is the velocity divided by the speed. And in this in this case the velocity is three cos t minus three sine t and four. And the speed we've seen before is nine times cosine squared plus 9 times sine squared t plus 16. And let's see, 9 cosine squared plus 9 sine squared, that would be 9. And 9 plus 16 is 25. So we're really talking about the square root of 25 down here. So our unit tangent is equal to um, 3 fifths cosine t and negative 3 fifths sine t and 4. Then we can find the curvature. First we find dt dt. So we look at how does the unit tangent change with time. So we get negative 3 fifths sine t and negative 3 fifths cos t and 0. If we calculate the length of d unit tangent d time, we get the square root of 9 twenty-fifths sine squared t plus 9 twenty-fifths cosine squared t plus 0, right? which is the square root of 9 twenty-fifths, which is 3 fifths. So that's the length of d unit tangent d time. And then we've already calculated that the speed um, was equal to 5, right? Because down here, Here's the speed, and it turned out to be the square root of 25, which is 5. So we now have kappa. Kappa is 3 fifths divided by 5, which if you multiply top and bottom by 5 is 3 25ths. Okay, so we know that kappa is 3 25ths, therefore the radius of curvature is equal to 25 thirds. So this, this curve has a constant radius of curvature which makes a lot of sense if you think about a circle, right? It's bending uniformly, or not a circle, a spring. You think about a spring, if it's bending uniformly, then the curvature ought to be constant at all times. Okay, and so we have a constant radius of curvature or a constant measure of the curvature, kappa. This problem asks us to find the curvature. Um, remember, the, the curvature is the derivative of the unit tangent with respect to s, and We've already seen that the derivative of, uh, or we've already seen that we could reparameterize this in terms of the arc length function s. However, that's really messy. So we could uh, find t as a function of s by, by taking dr ds and dividing by the norm of dr ds. But you can see this function is so messy when written in terms of the arc length parameter that I think we'll probably regret doing that. So after we had that, then we could take, we could calculate dt ds, right? Once we have the unit tangent in terms of s, we calculate dt ds and take its norm, and that would give us our curvature kappa. But let's go ahead and do it the other way, right? I think we'll be much happier if we find kappa by finding the length of the, the, the change in the unit tangent per unit time divided by the speed. So rather than working with this, this uh, reparameterization, the arc length parameterization, let's just work with the parameterization we were originally given. So we start off to find t. We need to find the velocity and divide by the speed. So that would be the norm of the velocity. That's the speed, right? OK, so working with this, we take the derivative. The derivative of t is 1. The derivative of cos t is minus tan t, and the derivative of 3 is 0. And the length, that's the velocity, the length of the velocity is 1 plus the tangent squared of t plus 0. 
but 1 plus the tangent squared is the, is the secant squared. And in this range, the secant is positive, so secant squared or secant squared is, is, would, uh, would always be the absolute value of the secant, but if the secant's positive, the absolute value has no effect, so we could just write it as over the secant of t. So we have over, um, this is 1 over cosine of the denominator. If you multiply top and bottom by cosine, then we get, let's see, cosine times 1 is cos and t, and minus tangent t times cosine t is minus sine t, and 0 times cos and t is still 0. There we go. We've got our unit tangent. Okay, so having our unit tangent, now we can take dt ds. So, or sorry, dt d time. So we're looking at the derivative of the unit tangent with respect to time. Ah, which is nice again. We get minus sine t and minus cosine t and 0. And the length of that d unit tangent d time would be the square root of sine squared t plus cosine squared t, which is 1. So we can get kappa because kappa is going to be the length of d unit tangent d time, which is 1 all over the speed, and we've already calculated the speed to be secant right here, so we get 1 over the secant, that's the reciprocal of um, the secant, and the reciprocal of the secant is the cosine, so we have in this case um, the curvature is equal to the cosine, of, the cosine of t, so in this range the cosine starts out as a number near 0, it goes um, to 1 when t is 0, and then it goes back to 0. And so we see that the curvature starts out very small. It becomes very curvy, and then it becomes less curvy again. In fact, if you were to plot this parametric curve, it's in a plane parallel to the xy plane. It's just where z is stuck at 3. So if we just look in the xy plane, the shape we see looks something like this. It comes up. It's not very curvy. It reaches its maximum curvature at time t equals 0, and then it starts to straighten out again.